So I'm with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and I run marketing there. Uh, prior to joining CNCF, I used to work at Docker, and before that, I used to work at other enterprise computing companies like Equinix, HP, and Lenovo. So I wanted to welcome you all, and uh, hope you guys are enjoying the sessions here at uh, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con in Seattle. So today what I wanted to do is to give you all a brief um, intro to some of the tools that we have created uh, within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So the Cloud Native landscape can be pretty complex and very challenging. And this kind of is an eye chart and that kind of explains how complex or challenging the overall Cloud Native landscape can be like. So what we did at CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, is we created a resource map, uh, which essentially represents all Cloud Native technologies, products, offerings, including vendors or members or major cloud providers and their products and services in a very interactive uh, way for anyone who's new to Cloud Native can access this resource or tool. Uh, so we are really proud that because there's a lot of work that went into it, uh, we started this resource map a year ago, and originally it was just a PowerPoint slide. We made, launched this and made this very interactive in the sense that if you want to update a specific category or if you want to update a specific product or service offering, all you have to do is to put a request on a pull request on GitHub, and we'll make sure that all the issues that uh, anything that you see here uh, will be corrected. Uh, the other fascinating thing about, and I want to just launch the uh, interactive landscape for you all. So. So as you can see here, uh, so the URL is landscape.cncf.io, or you can just do l.cncf.io. And here there are many different uh, filtering options. And it's pretty fascinating when I kind of just went through all the different options is the, uh, it pretty much shows, and let's just dive into one of this, which is Envoy, which was just the project that graduated last week. Um, as you can see, what we have done is we pull uh, information from various different uh, sources here. So as you can see, it tells you the first commit, the last commit, the latest tweets around this project. Um, and if it is privately funded, uh, it gives you more information in terms of the amount of fun funding raised. Or if it's a public offering, we kind of then talk about the overall market cap associated with this specific project or uh, technology. So pretty much it's one single view and you get everything you need uh, in terms of understanding or coming up to speed uh, with cloud native technologies or projects. Uh, the other thing that we have done is you can see there on the left that there are many different filtering options here. Uh, so you can sort this by either a cloud service provider and if you want to look at all their products or service offerings. And then what we've also done, which I'm going to kind of take you all through, is essentially what we call like the overall or a well-traveled or a well-tested path in the overall cloud native journey. And then there are different steps. And what we've done is we've done a detailed uh, view into each of those steps. So you can, if you're looking for a monitoring solution and when you click on it, you will see a bunch of monitoring products that become available or if you're looking at um, runtime, container runtime solutions, I've just chosen that. It automatically updated the view, and you can see that uh, it shows CNI, Rocket, and Container D. So here are just some examples in terms of the filtering options that are available. So just this view in terms of the overall uh, representation, in terms of how big the cloud native market cap is, it's about, uh, in terms of, it shows it's about a trillion uh, in terms of the overall market cap. Um, and I think if you just look at all the privately funded open source projects, it adds up to about uh, $13 billion. So I would highly encourage that you guys can go around and play with the uh, cloud native uh, interactive landscape. And again, if you see any products or services or categories uh, that need to be adjusted or need to be newly added, uh, please feel free to go to GitHub and uh, submit a pull request there.
The other thing I also wanted to uh, share with you all is, so one is the overall cloud native interactive landscape, which just talks about all the open source projects and technologies. And then a subset of that is around serverless. So we created a serverless working group. Um, and as a part of that, we have made available a serverless landscape. Uh, and so you can, again, um, uh, see this available when you just choose or filter out the serverless options as available as a part of this landscape. And again, that gives you just a view into serverless. So and again, we have made that available as a PDF. It's access to the front page, which is the interactive landscape, and then the back page is the trail map, uh, which is essentially what I'll be, again, uh, taking you all through. So one of the things we do at CNCF as an organization is we work with the entire community, and the community developers, contributors, maintainers, project leaders, uh, program managers, and we talk to a lot of uh, enterprises. Uh, we work with all the leading members and the cloud service providers. I think though the cloud native landscape uh, is still, it's, I would say it's still maturing, and most of the large uh, enterprises still find the journey to cloud native or the journey to digital transformation pretty daunting. Uh, so as a first step, one of the tools that we have created as the cloud, at the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is this trail map. And again, this is uh, one of the handouts that I was referring to, uh, which is uh, available at our uh, CNCF booth. Uh, so the trail map is, again, a tool, um, and it is a recommended or a well-traveled, well-tested path uh, that we think would be a good starting point. And again, there are different paths, uh, different use cases that one can take as you get on the cloud native journey. Uh, this is more like a baseline or an initial starting point. And again, I don't think I've seen any enterprise uh, company that is using all the projects. So we have about 31 CNCF projects uh, hosted under uh, CNCF, but I don't think all 31 projects can get used in one enterprise company. It's going to take multiple years to get there. But at least most companies are still, I would say, in the first three steps, which is containerization, CI, CD, followed by uh, orchestration. So I'm going to just take you all through the 10 steps that we have defined in the cloud native trail map, which is essentially a starting point. Um, so as you can see, the step one is containerization. So as all, as all of you know, you can do cloud native without containerizing your application. So any size um, application will do. So even if you have a PDP 11 uh, code, which is running in an emulator, which is what Ticketmaster actually had, and they took that whole code and they put it inside a container. Um, and that's how they're self serving billions of users who are actually using um, Ticketmaster. So the first step is to containerize your application. Uh, the second step, again, there was a bit of a debate in terms of do you set up CI, CD, or do you, once you put your application inside a container, then do you think about orchestrating it? Uh, so it turns out, again, having uh, received the feedback from the community uh, and also looking at various use cases and talking to uh, several customers, what we've learned is I think the best way to set this up is one, once you containerize, the second step is you want to set up your CI, CD workflow. Uh, so you want to make sure that all the changes you do to your source code automatically results in a container getting built, tested, and deployed across various environments, whether it's staging, QA, or uh, production. The second thing you might perhaps want to do is to set up automated uh, rollbacks or rollouts. So today at CNCF, uh, we don't offer a uh, Definitely, there are other solutions to look for, which is from Jenkins, GitLab, CI, and Spinnaker. And the third step is orchestration. So once you have your application containerized, you set up your CI, CD workflow, and the third step to look at is uh, orchestration. And definitely, Kubernetes is the leading orchestration uh, platform. Uh, I just pulled out some recent stats today. Uh, so Kubernetes has 100,000 uh, commits. Uh, 85,000 pull requests, and about 25,000 contributors or uh, developers. And Kubernetes stands number nine for commits and number two for authors or issues, second only to uh, Linux. Uh, uh, that exists today. 
So once you have uh, evaluated uh, other orchestration solutions that do exist, which is Mesos, Pouch, Nomad, Docker Swarm, or uh, Kubernetes, it's entirely up to the sp uh, specific solution that you're looking for, is to start orchestrating uh, your clusters or your, your Kubernetes clusters. The step four is observability, um, and what we kind of represent this in, to simplify the language around this, because three other types of solutions that fall under observability, is essentially table stakes for uh, cloud native at scale. Uh, so some of the solutions under this category that we uh, recommend that you look at or consider is Prometheus for monitoring. Again, Prometheus was, a, uh, was the second CNCF project to graduate this year. The first project was Kubernetes. Uh, Prometheus is a uh, monitoring uh, solution for cloud-native applications. And once you uh, finish orchestration and you're thinking about monitoring, the next thing to look at is logging, because once you have all the data collected, uh, FluentD provides a unifying solution for collecting all types of data. And then uh, FluentD is an open source, uh, FluentD is an open source cloud-native project. And then the last step is about is around um, tracing. Uh, so what we recommend is to look for a uh, open tracing compatible type of implementation like Jaeger. Uh, so the name Jaeger means hunter, and Jaeger was a um, open source project that was built and uh, tested uh, from Uber, and. Um, so Jaeger is now a very popular um, open tracing type of uh, solution uh, to look at. And the other thing I wanted to share about Jaeger, the way they, Uber kind of looked at the open tracing or the overall open tracing across distributed systems, is they used uh, Dapper, which was a Google internal tracing system as an inspiration. And then the other uh, solution that exists today, which is also a very popular open, uh, open tracing project, is, which is built and tested by Twitter, is Zipkin. So the step uh, five is uh, now you start getting into a little bit of more complexity, which is all around uh, service mesh, which is about being able to connect various services uh, together so you can constantly monitor uh, ingress from the uh, internet. And this includes uh, health checking or routing or load balancing uh, between multiple services. And some of the CNCF projects that uh, we recommend that you look at here is um, Envoy. Again, super excited about Envoy, which graduated last week. And uh, Matt Klein uh, from Lyft, he's done a phenomenal job with uh, just talking about several different use cases with Envoy, as well as uh, he's done several keynotes now and talks. And there's also a, a blog post which kind of summarizes the use case, uh, the multiple use cases with um, Envoy. So uh, the other, uh, so essentially, Envoy is a modern edge and a service uh, uh, and a service proxy, which is de designed for cloud native applications. And then the other thing to look at is Linkerd, which is a uh, network proxy like service, and it is designed and deployed as a uh, service mesh, and then it helps to control uh, services inside an application. So the step six is um, networking. So in order to, uh, so networking can get pretty complex. So there is, uh, there are three open source projects to help build that next step as you keep moving up the stacks. When you start from the infra level and you keep moving up, is to consider looking at a flex, flexible, a flexible networking layer. Uh, usually, most of the uh, solutions that we recommend are CNI compliant. So you, that's, you could look at Calico, Flannel, or uh, WeaveNet. And then you look at step seven, it's all about storage and uh, distributed uh, databases. So what this is not there on the slide, but Rook is a uh, cloud native storage orchestrator for uh, Kubernetes. And uh, Vitus gives you a lot more options than a single database will. So if you're primarily looking for more resiliency or scalability, an option to look at is uh, Vitus. And it's a really good option for running my uh, SQL at scale through uh, sharding. 
And now you uh, get into the uh, messaging uh, layer where you do want to have all these different microservices talking to one another and all across multiple different environments and even platforms, if you will. Uh, so if you need a higher performance than uh, JSON REST, you should consider using gRPC. So again, gRPC is a high performance RPC uh, framework uh, which enables communications between your uh, libraries, clients, and servers running across multiple uh, platforms. Uh, the other messaging system is NATS. Uh, NATS is a CNCF uh, project. And this is a publish and subscribe messaging system, uh, primarily oriented for the middle layer. And NAT's a messaging system. They have several different use cases. And one of the prime use cases that I've seen is around uh, Internet of Things. Then uh, step nine is container runtimes. Uh, I think most of the solutions that we have listed here are, are something that you guys must be already familiar with. So if you're looking for an alternative uh, container uh, runtime, the thing to consider is to make sure they are OCI compliant. Um, and some of the examples here are ContainerD, Rocket, and CRIO. Uh, Alibaba's pouch container runtime is also another good option to look at. So the last uh, step is around software distribution. So again, when we are talking here about uh, software distribution, it's primarily for a very large uh, scale type of deployment in production. And uh, so if you need to do more of a secure software distribution, uh, one thing to look at is Notary. Uh, so it is an implementation of the update framework, which we call it as Tough. Uh, so Tough is, again, designed for enterprise-grade secure uh, software distribution. And uh, the main job of Tough or even Notary is to make sure that as you pull the images from Docker, it's to make sure that uh, it ensures that the image is signed, it's trusted, it's verified, it's untampered as the application goes through multiple stages during the CI-CD uh, workflow. Um, so, and Tough, again, it's like I said, it's designed for enterprise grade, and the way it does it is it uses uh, various cryptographic uh, keys to make sure that the signing and the content uh, verification is fully trusted and signed and untampered. And we are seeing uh, deployments of uh, Tough that's been already used in production, like, uh, like Docker, uh, VMware, uh, Leap, and uh, the other companies that are uh, listed here. And uh, just recently, Harbor is a secure uh, container registry, and this was an open source project from uh, VMware China. And uh, this project was now recently donated to the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation. So some of the enterprise use cases that we are seeing is uh, companies would like to offer uh, a Harbor, uh, a secure registry, in order to address certain uh, regional compliance type of requirements. So uh, as I said, so the cloud native trail map summary, so we are issuing this as a handout. Uh, so this is just a very brief uh, intro, uh, but this is a really good starting point because I know that things are quickly changing in the cloud native landscape and it can get very complex and not knowing where to start. So this is a well-traveled path. Again, I get asked all the time, like, is this what we need to be sharing with our enterprise customers and is this the only path that they need to be taking? Absolutely not. So there are multiple different paths to take. Uh, so one of the things that we are also looking to do at uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is to create a next version of the trail map. So I would be uh, happy to take feedback, comments, or any suggestions you might have. Uh, so a couple of things to we are thinking about is to make this interact the trail map not just a slideware, but something that's more interactive. Uh, the other thing that we're also looking to do is to really bring out like the top 10 um, use cases. Uh, and also top 10 problems or challenges that enterprises are facing today. And I think now we are in a good position to further evolve the cloud native trail map because I think now uh, one of the recent uh, surveys that came out from Redmonk, it said that about 50% of Fortune 100 companies are using 
uh, Kubernetes in production at a massive scale. So I think now we are at a point that people are getting still are familiar with at least the first three steps, uh, containers, CI, CD, and orchestration. And definitely after that, I think there is a lot of uh, permutation combinations that can occur. And like I said, you necessarily don't have to use all the different projects to get to solve a specific problem. Uh, so we are looking to make this uh, very interactive. Uh, we are looking to actually make it in a way where you can look at a specific problem and then look at maybe should I consider this project and what would be a potential um, outcome. Uh, so this is going to be a really intensive, complex project because we'll be needing a lot of input and feedback from the community. And we are also looking to talk to several enterprise customers. And the other thing that one of the communities that's very close to CNCF is our end user community. So you might have heard this through our various uh, sessions here as well, or you'll be hearing it in the sessions you go to today. Uh, so end users, the way we define them are they are users of cloud native technology. Uh, so that's the main difference between an end user versus a vendor. A vendor or a member could be somebody like uh, the top uh, providers, it could be Amazon, Google, where they're actually commercializing and selling products uh, or services or solutions. And the main difference is the end users, they don't actually productize or commercialize uh, and sell it, uh, but rather they're primarily using cloud native technologies internally and they're trying to oper uh, optimize their all their internal operations. So whether it is from a CSED perspective or whether they're looking at uh, putting together a brand new uh, compute platform Form. Uh, so we are looking at a lot of end user use cases and then trying to see how best we can leverage the learnings from the end user use cases and eventually applying it to the trail map. And that was a similar approach we took for the overall cloud native landscape. Uh, so I would be more than happy if any of you had suggestions or any specific thing that you'd like to see as a part of the interactive version. And again, if you have any questions or even uh, suggestions with the existing static uh, cloud native trail map, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me um, and I can share my Twitter handle or you can also reach out to me by uh, email. So lastly, the last tool I wanted to share uh, is called the DevStats. Oh. So this is a tool that uh, we created, uh, I would say, three years ago, and it's slowly evolved. And I would say this is an amazing tool uh, for everyone to actually go and try it out. Uh, oftentimes, we always get asked in terms of, because it does, people want to understand how, what is the community uh, engagement with these projects? Are these projects healthy? Uh, so in, in order to do that, we have created this dashboard. And again, this was a very complex project that we worked on. And it looks at uh, GitHub stars. It looks at GitHub commits. Um, and so it's essentially a dashboard. So I'll just take you all through uh, just Kubernetes for now. So as you can see, it kind of gives you the uh, community um, engagement and sizing. So you can also look at how many companies are actually contributing to uh, Kubernetes. So you can uh, look at an hourly uh, view, or you can look at weekly. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, options in terms of how you can, you can actually create your own dashboards and really understand the usage of these uh, different projects. And the other thing that I thought was really interesting was you can also sort it by GitHub stars in the uh, in the repos, and in terms of how the stars are ingested, this kind of shows you how uh, complex or how the usage of Kubernetes is. And you can also actually traverse back in time from the time Kubernetes was an incubation project to now, which is a graduated project. And you can actually break it down by uh, the number of commits. You can also look at some of the top companies that are actually using or uh, actively contributing uh, to Kubernetes. So I often get, uh, so when people come to me asking for the health assessment or the community assessment, and how do you actually measure if these projects are really doing well, or are they slowly tapering off, or are they going? Is there, or is there like a slow time for the, some of these projects? I would say this is a public URL; anyone has access to it, uh, and feel free to kind of look through and filter it out and use your own filter criteria or sort or sorting criteria to generate your own dashboards. And again, if it's to be also kind of publish uh, our. Um, 
monthly or quarterly reports around the projects, but we again use this as our, as our main source. Uh, so I really wanted to make sure that uh, most of you are aware that this tool exists if you want to pull out your own reports. Uh, the other. So this is where I got my stats in terms of the number of contributors uh, that are actually contributing to uh, Kubernetes. Uh, so again, the, the, like I said, there are multiple different ways in terms of you can slice and dice your criteria and if you want to start uh, building your own reports and looking and gauging in terms of how all these projects are actually performing. I guess that's all I had. So I just kind of wanted to quickly summarize. So one is the overall landscape that we have created. I think it's an amazing resource to get started with in terms of just getting a sense of all the players in the cloud native landscape, various products, services, and offerings. Uh, the second one is just a trail map, which is your journey to digital transformation. That's what enterprises are looking for. And this is just a very basic or a starting point and a static view into the 10 steps in the trail map. And then the third uh, tool to look at is what we call the dev stats. So it was primarily started off to show the project and the health uh, around Kubernetes, but now the dev stats tool has evolved to support all the projects uh, under the CNCF umbrella. Happy to take any questions or uh, feedback or suggestions that you have in terms of the three uh, resources that I shared with you all today. Yes. No, so it was in house, but again, the. It, oh. So the question as and thank you, that was a, a great question. So the question is, when we created, when we built the DevStats tool, uh, was that done in-house, or did we also take a lot of help with the overall community engaging and building? So this was done uh, in-house, uh, but then it did take input from the uh, community. But I think the main resource that we looked at was also GitHub. So we considered, we looked at all the repos, and then we looked at all the stars, the commits, and then we built uh, a way for it to automatically pull uh, reports or data from uh, GitHub. And again, we also then overlay that with a lot of community-based efforts based on the working groups and some of the uh, contributor experience groups. And then so I think I would say it was like a three-step process, but the overall implementation uh, is in-house. Uh, and it's done by a guy by name Lucas, um, and he's still with CNCF. Um, and so if you have, if you have any changes to uh, DevStats, uh, Lucas makes sure that, again, you can submit a pull request. And those requests are taken and handled right away. All right. Again, so feel free to reach out to me. My uh, Twitter handle is dsprinter. Uh, and any questions or suggestions you have uh, with respect to the resources that the CNCF has built around cloud native would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Thank you.